everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, uh, thank you so much for uh, subscribing, liking, watching my videos. That's amazing. Um, otherwise, hey, thanks for joining me again if you've been around for a little while. So today I'm kind of just doing a quick little video for my fellow writers out there, especially ones who are not full-time writers, because I've been actually thinking, especially coming into this new year where I have a lot of ambitious projects that I want to tackle as far as writing goes, but it's not my main job. And sometimes it's hard <laughs> to be productive in those moments when we're not writing. And then I feel like, I, at least I do, I get into this cycle sometimes where if I'm not writing for a little while, then I feel like I am failing and I'm not getting anywhere. And, and it just gets into this whole spiel of negativity. Um, there are some things that I do in my downtime that I feel like are still being, um, like measures to be productive in the entire writing journey that I'm taking even though I might not be actually sitting down at a computer or, you know, sitting in a sketchbook and writing out physical scenes or whatever in my book. For the people who, you know, have writing as their side hustle right now or just a hobby that they want to make something more, or for the people who are full-time writers maybe and just might be able to kind of listen to this and understand that, you know, they don't always have to feel like they're not being productive in the moments that they're writing. I hope this is beneficial. So without further ado, here are my tips and tricks on how to be productive even when you're not writing. Let's go. So the first really simple way of, you know, being productive is just kind of taking the time out of your day, you know, or what, whenever you have a moment, you know, maybe you are sitting waiting for a meeting to start. Or maybe you're commuting and you have a moment on like a subway or a taxi or however you get to work. Uh, the best way to kind of try to be a little bit productive is, you know, just sitting and kind of outlining some things if you're able to. I am not the biggest outliner out there. So sometimes that's hard for me. But I do know that if I have a really good idea and I want to make sure that I don't forget it, I just jot down little things. Whether it's like I jot down some key points in a chapter I want to write or... I'm, you know, if I'm starting over for a new project completely, like maybe I will jot down little things that I want. But I do find that to be very helpful and productive when I'm not actually sitting down and writing. Case in reference for this, this past week that, you know, I'm filming this. So the weekend right before this is being filmed, uh, I spent the uh, day with my co-writer, Caitlin, who has been on this channel before. And our intentions was to kind of jump in and finish our edits on the Sunday we got together. However, we were kind of, we did take a little bit of a break. We were working on our own NaNoWriMo projects and then the holidays hit. So we had a bit of a gap between the last time we actually worked on our edits together for our co-written co book. So when we sat down, we're like, okay, you know what? Let's just read the last couple chapters that we actually had edited and changed a little bit of so that we're on the right track. And after that, I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't think we're actually going to get any writing done today, but let's outline because this is where we need to go. We need to kind of figure out what we're doing so that we don't forget again, because that's exactly what happened is that we let it go by so, so long, you know, we had time pass and we didn't really have any outline. So we just sat there for like two hours kind of plotting out the next five to six chapters that we either have to edit or we actually have like two chapters that we actually have to add in completely because there's a big focal point of the story that's being changed in it. Um, and that was being, like, I literally actually felt so productive after we were done. And we didn't actually get writing done. We just outlined together. And it really did. Like, it motivated me to want to continue with my series with her and, you know, get it out there this year. Because otherwise, I think we would have kept getting in this slump of, well, we, we don't know where we're going and kind of using that as an excuse to not sit down and write the book. So, you know, this is a very long winded story for this. But like I said, outlining your project in whatever capacity, whether it's an entire book or just a small little section or just putting little pinpoints of what you want to talk about so that you don't forget it can be very productive in the end. And it might give you that motivation to actually sit down when you have the next chance and actually get it done. The next tip that I have for being productive when you're not writing is to listen to something inspiring. So I'm going to break this down a little bit. The first thing that I would suggest listening to is a podcast. As I have dug my feet into 
um, the audiobook world and I've been sinking down into it because now I'm a huge audiobook subscriber. I've also found that I really love podcasts. Um, this was something I discovered back in grad school when I had to listen to podcasts and I didn't know when I was going to fit them in because I would drive a lot for work. And that's kind of when I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll just listen to this podcast for my grad, my grad school class while I'm on the road. And from there, I ended up finding a bunch of podcasts that I ended up really liking. One of the most amazing podcasts that I've discovered is a pretty big one in the writing world. And that's Writing Excuses. It is a 15 minute or so, about 15 to 20 minutes, um, that they come out pretty much every Sunday. And it has pretty famous authors. I know there's Brandon Sanderson is one of the hosts. And Mary Robinette Kowal, I think is her name. As well as there's two other ones that I'm not as familiar with. And they usually have like other guests that kind of come on here and there. But the wonderful thing about this is that it's all dedicated to writing craft. So you get kind of a 15 minute pep talk on what to do with your writing. And it could be any anywhere in the writing process. Whether you're plotting, you're you know just planning, you're actually writing, you're editing, you're um, submitting queries for agents you've written a book, you're writing a second book, like there's no end to what they talk about on the podcast. And it's very manageable. As I've said, it's 15 minutes. And most of the time people can fit 15 minutes into their day, whether you're taking a walk, walking your dog, doing the dishes, doing the laundry, just sitting down with your morning cup of coffee. There's a lot of ways that you can fit that in. And personally for me, that is one of my most productive ways to kind of get myself back in the writing habit because I absolutely love kind of hearing from these people who are professionals in the field and learning, like taking away something that I can actually use for myself. Um, part When I was writing a query letter for my co-authored book, those podcasts worked so well for me and really kicked me into high gear when I was writing because I wanted to be like, I can do this. I can write this. And I also listened to a lot of, um, I also listened to a lot of podcasts like with like talking about how to be a published author or like with other published authors and their own journey, which again, just helps so much. With that in mind, I also listen to podcasts that aren't specifically on the craft of writing, but have to do with writers themselves. So two of my favorites are Ink Feather Podcast and 88 Cups of Tea. Both are, I think, significantly well done. And a lot of times they talk about a wide variety of things with the authors. But I've also listened to some of those podcasts on each of those where they've talked with book agents or um, other professionals in the field in, or other professionals in general, like um, screenwriters or playwrights or stuff like that too. So you kind of get a wide variety. And again, that just helps motivate me to want to continue my own stories a lot of the time. So they might not be as specific with a writing craft, but they're still worthwhile in the end. In addition to listening to podcasts, I also recommend watching AuthorTube. AuthorTube is a great way to kind of kick yourself in gear because there's so many amazing people on this platform and it's so easy to take inspiration from them as well as getting some information on anything. I mean, there's tons of independently published authors out there from Jenna Morassi and Elliot Brooks. You have people who are trying to break into the writing world like Kate Kavanaugh, as well as some of my fellow small booktubers like Hudson McCarthy and... <clears throat> as well as some fellow uh, smaller booktubers like myself, such as Hudson McCarthy, who I absolutely love to talk with on this platform and who has become a sort of author to buddy of mine. I like to think so. So hi Hudson, if you're watching this. But those are just a few examples, but also there's um, a few traditionally published authors as well. Um, Alexa Dunn is a big one that I watch and I, I reference all of them because I do watch them all regularly, but they all have something to offer that I wouldn't know, just someone that's kind of new and not sure what to do. I've learned a ton watching AuthorTube. And again, I love being able to watch their videos and be like, ooh, so now that I'm really excited about this, <laughs> let me go do it. As I mentioned, they're just very inspiring people and they're all on a journey to publishing. And even if they have made it and they've published one book, the future in publishing is always murky for everyone. You're never guaranteed that you're getting a second book. So even if they're farther in their journey than I am, we all started at the same place. So 
I highly recommend watching other author tubers if you're just stuck or you feel like you're in a rut and you haven't been able to get in the writing process lately. In a similar vein, but not as interactive as podcasts or YouTube videos, I would also recommend checking out some of the subreddits on Reddit. This is something that I am still not as immersed in as I would like to be, but Reddit is kind of intimidating. I won't lie. <laughs> However, I have found a lot of great resources using Reddit and I've been able to connect with people who are kind of brutal at times, but also very honest and real about the publishing world. Um, there's tons of subreddits. There's a few uh, Reddit, subreddits that I follow um, pretty extensively that have to do with publishing and writing tips, as well as I follow one specifically for a young adult writers group, because that was kind of what I was writing more of in the moment. Since I joined that subgroup, my focus has been more on adult fiction and fantasy, go figure. But that is, you know, to say that there's other Reddits out there that have different subgenres. So if you're romance writers, there's probably a subreddit for that. If you're a horror writer, there's a subreddit for that. And so on and so forth. But the nice thing about it is you get to connect with tons and tons of people who have other connections or who are also trying to break in. And again, it's very much like YouTube where you can kind of like talk and get inspiration from it. But again, but there's a little bit more interaction where you can get into other things. For me, I was able to kind of ask for some beta readers in one of the groups I was in to kind of, or at least just get a feel for beta readers on how other people obtain them. I was able to join a Discord channel that has a ton of people in the network um, from all over the world, which was pretty cool. And it was nice to see like how they are doing in their own processes and so on. Uh, one of the most helpful things that I was using the subreddits for was to ask about how my query letter sounds because query letters are so intimidating and they're very hard to write. I have already <laughs> made several mistakes in query letters, but I keep trying because I want to make my book published one day. But uh, Reddit was so great because they were be really able to say like, oh, like I'm in the field, I'm, I am a traditionally published author or whatever, or I'm an agent. And they kind of were able to break down like what didn't work or why it didn't work it, which was great because as someone who was new to this and not having ever written a query letter before and not being very good to start, <laughs> it was really great to have that feedback. So going on a subreddit again, just to kind of get a feel for what you need to do or maybe some next steps um, with the the podcast, the YouTube videos, and the Reddit. A lot of those, what I was using them for was to kind of think about what the next steps are because when I was getting stuck at writing, I in the past, I wasn't doing anything in the beginning like to move forward. So when I started looking into all of these other platforms to get a, like information on writing and publishing, I was kind of looking forward. So like, how do I write a query letter? And how do I get an agent? And what questions to ask on the call? None of that mattered in the moment, but it got me to the point where I was thinking in my head, I know I'm not there yet, but I need to get there. In order for me to get there, I need to write the book. <laughs> so at the end of the day, this is all kind of motivation fuel for how I was writing, but they were really good. And like I said, they're always there that I can go back and check on them. So maybe I get to the point where I am having a call with an agent. I know I already flagged what video I want to watch so that I can kind of go through what questions I should be asking if they're not already being asked or answered in that interview. So another ramble, but Reddit was really good. And I think everyone should just go check it out. If not briefly, you don't have to join or stay on it, but there's a lot of good resources on there. So I mentioned writing a query letter and that's actually the next thing that I would recommend taking a stab at. If you're really stuck writing and you're not really sure what direction you're going in with your novel, writing a query letter could be a breakthrough for you because they're very hard to do. Essentially what you need to have in a query letter is kind of like the opening, a little bit of the middle and like the vague, this is what needs to happen because this is what your plot is. But it's only in about three paragraphs. You only have a few sentences in those paragraphs and you really have to make an impact. So if you're writing a book and you actually don't know your direction, you can't write a query letter because either you're gonna write a query letter and you're gonna be like, wow, that's a piece of shit <laughs> or 
you're just not going to be able to sit down and write it because it's, you're going to be like, wow, I don't actually know where this is going. I can't do it. So for me with my last NaNoWriMo for NaNoWriMo 2019, I actually, before I started writing the book, um, and I was plotting it a little bit, I was having a struggle with what I needed to have in my middle. So I did take kind of a break one day and I tried to write a query letter. The query letter wasn't terrible, I guess, but I knew it wasn't getting me anywhere. It just, it was practice. And it was something that I know if I get down the line, I'm going to need to do stuff like that. So all that kind of practice is still going to be productive for me because at worst case scenario, yeah, I have like a start of a query letter, but I have something there still. So I can just go rearrange it and keep playing with it and make it better and better and better until I'm finally at the point where I am trying to actually use that query letter. Again, it's not something that you absolutely need to be done, but it can help give you direction when you're writing, especially if you're just having a real struggle moving forward in your work in progress. So the next few things that I have to kind of wrap up this productivity and motivation list are different sorts of kind of classes or workshops that you can take. So the biggest thing that I could say is, and I, I'm not sponsored, but I see Skillshare around YouTube like crazy. And I am actually thinking of joining Skillshare for some editing stuff on video making. But I, as of this video, I have never used Skillshare. So I'm not promoting it as something that I use, but just as something that I know other people have really raved about and something I might use in the future. But I do know that there are actual specific writing courses on Skillshare. Um, there's tons of YouTubers out there who are partner with Skillshare and I'm pretty sure you get like two months free. So take advantage of it. If you feel like you're stuck and you have nowhere to go, go find a YouTuber who's sponsoring it and get the code and get two months for free and check out some of their videos. I know that there's a mixture of like professors and or um, famous authors. I think Saba Tahir I've mentioned, I've heard mentioned on YouTube they're on there and they're teaching these classes and I don't know what the specific classes are but they're there so why not use them especially if you can get it for free if you have more expendable money you can always actually go take a class at a university local colleges sometimes have writing courses or bigger universities do obviously that's going to depend on the money that you can expend but sometimes those courses might be worthwhile. I mean, you don't have to have a degree to take a college course. As someone who went to college, I was very privileged that I was able to minor in writing. So I have some college courses under my belt that are specifically to do with writing and they've helped me immensely as a writer. But I know that not everyone has that privilege. So if you have the availability, I mean, even if you're in, I went for psychology and yeah, there is writing in psychology, but it's not the main focus it's you know helping people but I mean even if you're doing like chemistry or you know another like a, a medical degree if you can fit an elective in in your college has it maybe take it there's no harm in it if you can fit it in aside from the actual courses that you have to pay for I would keep an eye out for local colleges having um, free or discounted writing workshops. Again, I know the college that I attended would have writing workshops as well as some of the local colleges where I live now. And sometimes like they do range, but like you can go to some of them for like 45, 50 bucks or go for like a weekends or something, which are more like conferences that end up getting a little bit pricier. But again, if you're really motivated to follow through and be productive if you're ac actually writing your own story doing some kind of course or workshop could be really beneficial and like I said as someone who has taken college courses they were very beneficial for me in the same vein you know workshops are usually a couple hours one day in a year you can try to attend conferences for writing which open up tons and tons of other doors I have not done this because they're very, very expensive. And I mean, a couple hundreds to thousands of dollars. And God love anyone who's ever been to a writing conference, like bless you, because I can't even imagine sometimes forking over that money. But I digress. If you have it at your disposal and you really want to, I mean, there are plenty of conferences. Again, there are some that are lower hundreds of dollars between like three, four, five. And then you do have the higher ones that get closer to a thousand. Plus you do have to take into account you know, accommodations, travel, hotels, food, 
that might not be included in a conference. But if you can be there, I've looked into a few and I mean, there's, there's agents there, there's publishing houses there. You get to pitch your work if you're at that point. Um, you get to learn, do classes on the craft and learn other things of the industry. So they probably are really worthwhile. It's just, they're not accessible to everyone. So if you have those means, they might be something to look forward and look into. I do know personally, I found um, a writing conference that is a two day, I think. It was for, I think $150 and it was only about an hour and a half away from where I live in a small college. So that is something that I think I am going to look forward to. And if the timing's right and I can afford it, I think I am going to try to go to that one. If I do, I'm going to try to vlog it, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's not a definite. So I am trying to also do something like this and then I can report back and let you guys know how my experience is if that's the case. On the complete opposite end of money. <laughs> you can always check out local libraries because I'm actually surprised with my small area how many writing events there actually are in the local library system. From like my little tiny local library to like the bigger city library that's connected in the library system. They have visiting authors that's free to attend. They have writing workshops. They have writing groups. There's a lot that could be offered out there. Um, that you might not even know about. I actually followed my local library for this reason because there, I didn't realize there were so many writers or like, you know, rather they're serious about getting published or just like very casual writers, but there's a ton in my area and it's so amazing to connect. Very similar with NaNoWriMo. I mean, that's another motivator you can do is by looking into your region and finding other writers, but the library I do feel like is a little bit safer and it doesn't have as much pressure, I think, as NaNoWriMo. But I, like I said, definitely recommend looking onto their website, Facebook, whatever your local library system has. There's a chance that you might be able to find some resources there. The libraries are great places after all. My last tidbit, which is a hit or miss, is local bookstores. Um, I know the, clo the local... The closest bookstore to me that I've seen have kind of events is about 45 minutes away from me. So like I said, it might be a hit or miss. There is a, a bookstore closer to me, but they've never had an event other than some children's authors that are like the picture books and stuff like that. I haven't seen um, other writers come there. But um, a Barnes & Noble did have a visiting author series where there was authors there. And for me, and my co-writer, we both went, we got books signed. They were young adult authors. And as we were talking to them, we were able to ask them questions. And we asked like, what was your querying process like? What was meeting your agent like? And that was very valuable information for us. And if that is something that you can do, again, it was free for us to go. We just brought our books, got signed and hung out and talked with these actual published authors out there and got some more knowledge. So that might be other than the local libraries, some of your local bookstores might have events as well. If you can attend, definitely do it. So in order to stop my rambling and <laughs> hopefully go get my own writing done at this point, um, that's where I think I'm going to end this video for now. If I do think of more productivity hacks, I will certainly upload a part two to this. But for now, I think that's a pretty suffice list and you guys probably should stop listening to me and go get some writing done. <laughs> if you guys have any more or any tricks that you use, if you have any thoughts or comments about these topics like definitely let me know down below and otherwise I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!